have I have a, a mother. My mother uh, was a fantastic lady. In this day and age, God knows what she would have accomplished as the wife of a very dominant Irish woman. She was she was pretty docile until my dad died, and then she turned into a real character. And she did all the things she ever wanted to do, and it was amazing what she wanted to do. And she lived to be 85, but the last five years of her life she had a stroke and uh, was in bed. So the living was not exactly very exciting for her. And so I wrote this about the time she died. Um, and this was February of 1977. Every time I, sit down, I sat down to write a column last week, the words wouldn't come. I whipped out some articles and did some interviews and took some pictures, happy to be busy, but a personal column I could not tackle. My friend Ferdy Pites took me aside just last night and told me why. He said, you know, you're going to have to bite, write about your mother. And I suppose I am. All during the last five years that mother was bedridden with a stroke, Ferdy would come up to me and say, how is mother? And I would say, well, she seems content. She's not in pain. She likes television. She enjoys company, something like that. And as I think about it now, that's incredible. How could a vivacious, active, beautiful lady like my mother be content to be bedridden, saying only yes or no, and watching her family come and go, the seasons change, the holidays go by. But she was, or she made us think so, always smiling at us and, and, and patiently waiting for her care. Occasionally she could be a little grumpy. I, I hadn't been there for a couple days. If, if I hadn't been there for a couple days, I'd have to have a pretty good explanation before I got that smile. And she laughed out loud at all my stories. <laughs> she was my very best audience. And always when our visit would, was over, I would kiss her on the mouth and on the forehead, and I would say, I love you. And I think she knew that, too. Her eyes told me she did. And sometimes she would say, yes. I would sit on one side of her bed and hold her hand, and her very dearest friend and companion, Claire Smith, would sit at her post on the other side of Mother's bed, and we would talk and laugh. Claire must have spent most of the last five years in that chair, doing fancy work and mending and keeping Mother company. Mother especially enjoyed visits from her grandkids. My boys would go in and she would hold their hands and beam and say yes, most emphatically. My daughter Julie, and she had a game going, she wouldn't say yes to Julie at all, until Julie would say, well, I guess I'll go now, Grandma. And then Grandma would get a big grin and say yes. And, <laughs> and Julie made a big thing of that, of course. Sister June would bring the mail. Brother Vince stopped almost every night and watched TV with her. But now she's gone. Last week she just gave up and slept away. God knows she must have been tired of it. She who traipsed the world with aplomb until she was all 81 years old must have been tired of being confined to a bedroom, participating on the edges of everyone's life. We talked a lot the last week when we knew she was leaving us about how good things were going to be for her. She looked at us with unseeing eyes and held our hands so tight. Selfishly, not until the last couple of days was I able to pray that the Lord would take her home. That's ridiculous, isn't it? As long as that smile was there, our mother was with us. So now, Ferdy, I've written about mother. And even as the sounds of the hallelujahs we sang at the funeral fade away in my memory, the memories of the bedridden lady fade away too. And memories of the mother who walked regally into my kitchen every Sunday and who polished my silver and sewed on my buttons and adv advised me in no uncertain terms how to run my life, take precedence. That's the way she would want it. We buried her in her red suit. She always wore that when she traveled with her NCCW, National Catholic Council of Catholic Women, Mrs. Arthur Mullen Award, and the gold rosary that was a gift from Daddy. On her casket was a spray of yellow football mums. Every anniversary, Dad sent her two dozen of them, and after he died, Sister Mary sent them still. Everybody said she looked wonderful, certainly not like she was 86 years old. That always strikes me as a little ironic. But nonetheless, I hope I look wonderful when the time comes. We shall miss her. But our strength comes from knowing death is not extinguishing the light. It's putting out the lamp because the dawn has come.